Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about the wage gap myth. And, well, this is something that is perpetrated by a lot of, or talked about by a lot of less educated feminist types. The types that don't actually, or I guess by more educated people too, but uh, it's tough for me to take people seriously that talk about stuff like this because it's so easily debunked, kind of. Um, well, it, in general, it's a really easy sort of... Uh, fallacy to debunk so the idea basically is that women make however much less than a man for every dollar it's like 88 cents on the dollar or something like that um and this is simply just taking the median earnings of women comparing them to the median earnings of men and saying oh this is unfair because women are making less i mean this is such an absurd argument i think anyone who has any bit of rational faculty left ca uh, can parse through this one pretty easily so the basic idea is that for some reason this sort of inequality is a negative thing. However, we live in an economy that where you or where your employer gives you value based off of what you produce for the employer or your your wages are determined based off what you produce, based off the values that you actually produce. Um so different jobs produce different values, and these values are determined by how much people are willing to pay for it and how much it costs to produce it, which labor is a part of, but there's other things like other resources, capital, land, entrepreneurial ability, like all the profits that the entrepreneur wants to keep. Um, all those sort of things are part of it. Um, but so, but as, as a laborer, Ultimately, your wage is sort of determined by the demand for the product, by how much value you're producing for other people, for how much other people want of the product that is being produced. That is part of how the value is determined. That's largely how it is determined. Um, so each job has a different sort of value that it provides to society. Let's. I'm just going to use that term because it's very convenient to use. Um, <laughs> Even though it's kind of a meme, um, but whatever. We live in a society, guys. Oh, shit. What? Oh, my God. No way. Bro. W yeah, bro. We live in a fucking society where we're 13 percent. No, I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm not going to finish that. There's no point in finishing that. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm kind of losing my train of thought here. I'm just rambling at this point. But let us get back to our main point. So the basic idea is that different jobs produce different values for people. Um, a doctor is a lot more valuable to you than a fucking toothbrush or some shit like that. So the person who who's sitting in the factory producing toothbrushes is going to make less than a doctor. That's I mean, you can get really deep into different why different things are valuable and I have a value I have a video that kind of discusses a little bit of those differences like the difference between social value and like actual societal value and all all those different concepts. Um so yeah, uh I'm not going to put it in the description because I don't want to. <laughs> or maybe I will. Fuck it. I'll, I'll put that link in the description if you want to watch that video. Um, I just got to remind myself to do it. Uh, so, yeah. there's Your wage is determined by how much value you produce. And this is a very objective sort of thing because it is in the employer's best interest to say oh, if you make this much, I'm going to give you this much of a wage. It's not going to be the exact same because they want to make some profit so that the business is profitable, the business can grow, and this person, the entrepreneur, wants to act in their own self-interest and take some of the money for themselves. But they're going to pay you based on how much you're willing to accept and how much value you actually produce. Um, they can't pay you less than what you produce. That's impossible. You're going to they're bus they're going to go out of business if they do that and then then there's going to be no products for anybody but they want to get this they want to get your wage as low as possible so that you're but still that you're able to accept it um they also want it to be lower than how much value they they're, they're going to how much profit they're going to make from your services how much uh profit they're going to make from your labor and these profits are in objective value this is something true in reality this is how much people are gonna pay for it at this price this is how much profit they're gonna make from your labor and they're gonna always pay you less than that that's always the upper bound and for each job these upper bounds are different for each person these upper bounds are different because each person is has different productive capabilities and also has different things that they want out of a job some people are going to want to spend more time at home take more vacations other people 
or they're gonna they're gonna not want to travel as much but other people are gonna want to travel be on be on the job 24 7 pretty much and those people are gonna make a lot more money but all of this is not taken into account when with these gender wage gap sort of things and when you actually I mean the fact is these businesses are employing you and it's a negotiation between you and the businessman the businessman says this is how much I will to gain value from and you if you think that that wage is okay for you and they're, you're like I'll gain value from this wage this is more valuable to me than my time then you accept the wage this is simply a negotiation between you and your employer nothing else matters besides that it needs to be a win-win relationship for both of you um, and as long as that's taking place I see nothing immoral going on um, even if it's different between different groups of people there's nothing immoral going on um, but I mean that's that's simply the argument for even if this wage gap was true it wouldn't there wouldn't be anything wrong with it um, because that was those are the wages that were negotiated upon and agreed upon and also another thing if women actually do accept lower wages and do the same amount of work then as an employer you would hire only fucking women you would only hire women because they're gonna accept lower wages and do the same amount of work you never hire a man in the rest of your life however this is not the case so what this means ultimately is that women are either taking jobs that are lower paying or they're doing less productive work or which I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to say that women are doing less productive work because there's not any evidence of that claim being true. Or they're more willing to do things like take vacation time, not work as long, strenuous hours, um, not travel as much for their job, um, spend more time at home with their kids. I mean, if, if any of these things are true for women, you'd expect them to make a lower wage and you'd see that as perfectly fine. They'd be doing less work and getting a lower wage in accordance with that. And also with the different jobs, they'd be doing a job that provides less value for an employer and a le less value for society, I guess. So they'll be making a lower wage because of that. And ultimately, this is exactly what you see. Women tend to take jobs that pay a lot lower, and they tend to be a lot more likely to take off time off for vacations to spend time with their kids, um, less willing to travel, um, less less willing to work long strenuous hours away from their family all these are just basic facts and this is why women generally get paid less this is the reason for the wage gap I mean this is very obvious to anybody who thinks a little bit about this statistic because I mean it's not a statistic statistic that makes much sense even on its face because it's like wait because the point I made earlier because it's like wait if these entrepreneurs can hire women for less why wouldn't they only hire women so then you actually look into it and you're like oh these women are providing less value on, uh, as in aggregate so they're making less money that's not to say women are less valuable they are I mean women are extremely fucking valuable um, there's there's no evidence that they're not um, there's differences between men and women though and these differences lead to different jobs that they take um, and different tendencies at work that lead them to provide less value to employers they're still extremely valuable because there's a lot of beneficial things that women can do that men cannot do like empathize but and take care of people and there's a lot of a lot of good things that women can do um, there's a lot of things that women are superior to men in um, but yeah so yeah and, and I mean like even if you even just looking at my my family like we're all very similar people all have fairly similar intellectual interests um, my dad's an engineer my mom's a math teacher um, I'm gonna be an actuary my sister's gonna be a elementary school teacher there's obviously there's obviously differences between men and women and these manifest in career choices and these career choices um, on an aggregate lead to women making less money than men and the fact that women are a lot more likely to stay home with their family and take care of their kids makes it so that women on a, on aggregate make less than men. There's nothing wrong with these facts, and this is just the way it is. <laughs> so thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Peace.